welcome to Amina Jimo Show at Amina Jimo's Foundation. Today I'll be playing you a voice note and the title of our show today is Sabi Yourself. Sabi Yourself is self-awareness. This is from one of our members, one of our esteemed members at Amina Jimo Show. So I'll go ahead and play the voice note so you guys can listen. Some of us came here to be the possibility that a lot of people do not think possible. Growing up on this plane of existence, I've been observing a lot of things. Everything I went through growing up wasn't necessarily normal. And there was a reason for it. A lot of things I'm gonna say here may scare some people, may shock some people, but you see, shock it's not such a bad thing. Shock wakes you up. This is why many of these celebrities that understand this do things like this. And I will explain to you the method behind it. When somebody, say for example, they're doing the Oscars or they're doing an award show here in Nigeria. If you observe, you see that not many, but there are few women who will dress and their dressing will shock people. Now, that shock jolts people, it triggers people because what they're seeing is a reflection of what is going on inside of them. Now, many Nigerians who criticize other people for doing what they do, secretly somewhere inside wish they could do the same. And rather than be honest and vulnerable about it, they criticize. Big Brother is another example. I've observed Big Brother for a while. Now I must be honest. The first few times I saw Big Brother, I was like, you know, sin is full of shit. You know. But the more and more I clean my lens of biases, the more and more I realize that everything just be as it be. If you know if you see him as it be, then you go see him the way you think say he's supposed to be. Which you know be. Being on this plane, a lot of things observationally seen. And like my brother Judy Krishnamurti would say. <laughs> Life is just beautiful, man. Life is beautiful and um, when you misunderstand yourself. You see misunderstandings everywhere. When you love yourself, you realize that everybody is at their own level of awareness, expressing themselves. The only way to really know who you are is to express yourself. Sadly, many are in a deep, hypnotic spell mm. to such a degree that either people hide to be themselves or they conform to be accepted by others. Now, conformity not slow suicide because deep inside of you you are frustrated, you are angry because you are limiting yourself from being yourself. Instead of being yourself, you're trying to be what other people expect you to be. And there is no way on this earth you're gonna be happy doing that. Many of you lack courage because you don't know who you are. If you know who you are, <laughs> it doesn't really matter what people think because you know who you are. And when they come around you trying to criticize, you know, do all kinds of things, you know what they're showing you. What they're showing you is what they're showing you. It either triggers you or you observe. In any event, everything you see on the external world is a reflection of your internal world. As within, so without. 
There is so many things that many people are in the process of getting to understand. Now, if you notice the way I phrase that, I did not say they don't know. I said they're in the process of getting to understand it. And that is life. It's free will. Whatever you're experiencing is of your own creation. If you feel great, it is because of you. If you feel bad, it is because of you. When you understand this, you realize that um, life is beautiful. It truly is. The educational system is going to change. Politics will change. Religion will either evolve or it will cease to exist. We are moving into a realm where that old world, let me even phrase it for you from this perspective. Observe life prior to 2020 and post 2020 and see for yourself if the world never change. Change is constant, but our problem is we don't want to change. And yet we expect things to change. How? You have to be the change you want to see in the world. Nobody else is going to do it. The president ain't going to do it for you. As a matter of fact, I remember that quote he made. Yeah, he first said it in Yoruba. I can't um, remember the exact words he said in Yoruba, but he, in English he now said, everybody's saying, save me, save me. Save yourself. I'm quoting Tinubu directly. He's my brother. For those of you who have been listening to my voice notes over the years, you will know that I don't run him down. I will say things as they are, but I don't run him down because I give him a lot of respect for creating who he has become. And it's an example I will use to show many of you that every Nigerian too can become who they truly want to become. If you are just going to work nine to five, doing that all over the place, it's because you believe that's what you can become. If somebody is doing uh, whatever it is they're doing, I don't want to put too many labels here, it is what they're doing. It's a process. People dog Gen Z a lot. I love Gen Z. You know, I love people who have the courage to do what needs to be done. Whether you call it good or bad, it's your problem. But I love people who have the courage to do what they want to do because I'm the same way. Let me use my life as an example to give you guys some perspective. I've learned in life that when you're honest with yourself, nobody can lie to you because you'll see it. But when you lie to yourself, you're not going to see the lies. You think the lies are normal. And therein, they repeat. You keep doing the same things over and over again. When I got married first in 2004, then I was a... Um, I was in religion, so I was a Jehovah's with Jehovah's Witness. And whatever I say here is not to run down Jehovah's Witnesses, but it's to give you perspective on what religion does to people, especially your brain and your mind. <laughs> so prior to meeting my first wife, yeah, I had a girlfriend from when we were teenagers, deep shit. She was Pisces, I'm Aries. And we went different ways because in my attempts to be a good Jehovah witness, let me use that phrase, I tried to get her. When, when I look at it now, I just realize how stupid I was, but that's how it be. We will learn wisdom from being stupid. That's how life be. And I asked, I told her that if she becomes a Jehovah witness, we'll get married. And right there and there, no be love. Love is when you accept somebody for who they are. Whether they are a bully worshiper or whatever. If you love them, you love them. Fela's mom, in fact, Fela's mom is a great example. Fela's father was a pastor, as many of you may know. The mom did what she did. Most, most likely African traditional religion. But they were together, they had kids. You know? Um, all this idea of when I see situations, because I lived it and I learned from it. When I see situations of people saying, oh, because this person is a Muslim and I can't marry them. or they, If you love them, then what the fuck are you saying? You want to let your parents decide for you what you already know you should do. And this is why I keep saying that we're not aware. So, go marry to the Jehovah's Witness lady. She's a beautiful lady. Um, 
But you see, when you go into a situation with the wrong uh, foundation, it ain't gonna work. Me being me, when the year old, that she showed me all, in fact, all the signs were there. I saw everything. Yeah, but um, when I was lying to myself, love will conquer all. That's my, that's my belief. And that's still the case. Love will conquer all. But when you have a certain mindset, you will attract a similar mindset. And therefore, my first wife was one of my great teachers. That experience set the ball rolling on my journey of self-realization. For me, I have learned that pain is not the enemy. Pain is the teacher. Because what I did not want to face within myself, the pain she was able to help me experience by triggering me, by showing me parts of myself I did not want to see, sent me on the journey to go and look for myself. Now, if you know anything about Aries, which by the way, today is um, the shift in the nodes, in the nodes. Um, you might not understand what I'm saying. I'm talking about astrology here. Um, January of 2022, it was an in Taurus Scorpio axis, which is why there was more concerted efforts towards people becoming more nature oriented, you know, people planting trees, people wanting to do more natural things, you know, things of that sort. As above, so below. We are all the universe here. Whatever is happening in the universe is happening within us. We are expressing the same things. We just try and or be an obstacle in the path by thinking differently. Today, it has shifted to the Aries-Libra axis. One thing with Aries is we know what we are. We know who we are. And we go through the experience of getting a deeper understanding of that. And me being me, rather than sit down and understand why the first marriage didn't work, I ran into a second one. Shortly after going to the second one, me alone by myself. I'm not the kind of person that would be calling friends and asking friends for advice. Nah. I know myself. If I if I if I don't understand the situation, I would jump into it into the fire. I'm fire element, so I need to fear fire. I would jump into the fire to understand the chaos. When I understand the chaos, I will bring order to that chaos by my awareness of what is going on. So if you, if you are afraid to experience things, you will never grow. My growth was fast tracked because I am not afraid to do things. Don't get me wrong. I don't have, I'm not afraid to be in a committed relationship. However, if that relationship is not edifying me, I'm, if I'm not feeling that love from the other person, you know, but, it's bye-bye. I don't apologize for things like that. I will chest it and say, just like I told my second wife, I was like, look, for your long-term happiness and peace of mind, we have to go separate ways. At that time, I already had a son. And before I said that thing, I had sat down by myself, with myself, for myself, and analyzed the whole situation. I played the thing left, I played it right, I played it up, I played it down. Okay, if I now decide to stay, because of my son. How would that play out? Once I tell somebody I'm no longer doing the marriage, there and there, I'm already single. I have moved on. I even check about Aries people. We don't we don't dilly dally. Relationship end yesterday, today I don't even move on. We don't sit down and be leaking wounds. No, it has happened, it has happened, we move on. And um, when I processed it left out of the center. I didn't grow up with my mom in the house. My mom and dad split up on us too. And I'm happy for that. And I will explain to you why I'm happy for that. This is going to be a long voice note. So if you don't like long voice notes, stop listening and just go do what you're doing. Um, everybody's experience is everybody's experience. And there's a reason you're experiencing that experience because you agreed to experience that experience before you came into this life. And it's only when you go to that experience later on whether you understand it the first class or you have to repeat the class several times to understand. Some people don't even understand until they die or leave this physical plane. That too is an experience. There's no judgment. Everybody's curriculum is different. My own curriculum was I was raised by a single father and that was the best experience I ever had. 
because there's certain things I was able to do which would not have happened if my mother and father were in the same house. You see, all that toxicity that goes on in many married, many homes, that you people think that, okay, it's because the, the mother and father are doing it for the children. Now lie. Stop lying to yourselves. You ain't doing shit for the children. If there's no love in our marriage, you guys should have the courage to end it. You're giving those children more traumas for them to go and resolve. Which, perhaps, by the way, is the way it's supposed to be, which is why the children incarnated in that family. So, when I looked at the whole thing, I know myself. I would bring babes to the house, she would see it, and someone would see it, and I did not want to hurt anyone needlessly. So my first thing was, I was not thinking about just myself. My first thing was to think about her. If I didn't care, I would have continued to do what I wanted to do, and that would be understood. So nobody can do shit to me. But because of the fact that I loved her, I said, because love is freedom. This is what people don't understand. And when I told her that we have to go separate ways, you know, it was then I began to see that um, a lot of Nigerian women are under the hypnotic spell of patriarchy. Because from, ch from childhood, women have been programmed how to cook. Not for themselves, though. It's how to go and take care of a home. It's how to take care of a man. And I remember Chiamanda DJ some um, years ago made a comment that from young age women are taught how to be wives, how to clean the house, how to do this, how to do that. What are men taught? Zero. Zilch. This is why you hear cases of uh, men either they're beating their wives or whatever because they were never given a sense of responsibility as individuals growing up. They were allowed to do what they were allowed to do because patriarchy says the man is the head. So in a family of three boys, two girls, or even one girl, three boys, one girl, that girl becomes the house girl of the entire family. We go kitchen, we assisting the mom. Is there a crime if those three boys go in the kitchen and assist? Is there a crime there? Is there a crime in boys sweeping the house? Is there a crime in... When I, when I was in the States, yeah? I know it's probably worse here, but when I was in the States, what shocked me is that you see mothers doing laundry for teenagers, people of 15, 16, 17, 18. I'm like, what the fuck? That's how it is. And when they leave the house now, they can't do shit. Growing up, nobody made me do anything wrong. My dad ran a hotel, you know, there were people around. One day, out of boredom, literally, out of boredom, because I've watched the elephant commercial with uh, Zebediah. If anybody remembers that old uh, advert, you know, Zebediah doing the elephant advert. I like the fact that they will put the elephant detergent in water and they shake it and it becomes for me. That just fascinated me. So I went to the laundry, put water in the container, shook it together and just put my clothes in there and I just began to wash. That was how I started. And that saved me because when I went to boarding school, you know, Command Secondary School Joss, I knew how to wash my clothes. I met a lot of people there who didn't even know how to. So, all you parents out there who think that, okay, we're well, doing it to please the children, to, to make it to, for the children, you're all liars. If there's no love in that relationship, you end it. Show your children through your experience of what not to do. When you stay there, you think you wait, you think children don't know things. That is that's the unfortunate thing about a lot of people. You think children are just children. No, they're not. I can play back to when I was two years old. When I saw my mother and father fight. Not just the uh, slap slap or racking, because both of them were in the army. So seeing that was one of the major catalysts for me as a child to be better. And even though in my first marriage we fought physically. That mistake, let me use the word, brought to my awareness the stupidity of it all. Why was I fighting her? Because she was saying things that upset me. So after all of that, I looked at the whole scenario. By the way, in that fight, you know, I almost lost an eye. Because it wasn't really a fight where I was really beating her like that. I was aware it was on the shoulder. Whether you say beat not beat. That's fine. But 
I thought the whole thing. And then realized that, okay, I've done this. I actually went to the elders, you know, because I called the elders. Because I was, like I said, I was a Jehovah's Witness at that time. I've always been somebody who likes to be true to myself. Whether I delay it or not, but last, last, I could, I could be true to myself. I called and I said, look, oh, this is what has happened, though. Told us to come and see them the next day. We went there. She asked, they, they asked me what happened. I told her the whole story. I didn't lie. They asked, she was there. She, if I was lying, she would have told, said, told them I was lying. I told everything. They asked her, do you forgive them? She said, yes. So in my mind, okay, maybe this is an opportunity for us to roll over again. But um, there was no fire. When we, we need to realize when something don't die. And if we're not aware, you'll just be there punishing yourself needlessly. When I asked her if she loved me, and she told me point blank that she didn't. That was me. That was when I realized what I had to do. I can't be, I don't know how to mark register. Many people in marriages mark register. Oh, we've been together for 50 years. They come out, you see them in party wearing the same thing. Do they sleep in the same room? Are they cold to themselves when they get home? So if you notice, I don't have any issues telling you my life story because I'm hoping you can learn one or two things from it. This is what I'm saying is about, uh, so it's 2006, I mean, 2000, no, this was 2005. I can't do the math and know how, how long ago that was. Um, but it taught me a lot of things. So I've learned that therefore conflict or conflicts are very necessary because they bring clarity. You won't really know somebody until you have a disagreement or you have a fight with them. Because what that conflict is there to do is to help you all see, because they're two individuals at the, end of the, at the end of the day. And those two individuals, if they're not true to themselves, if they don't love themselves, they're going to bring that misunderstanding into that relationship. And if both of them are like that, then domestic violence then go and sue for them. But if one person is, uh, is aware and the other person is not, the one who is aware at some point will just walk away. Because that class don't end. It's on to the next. You all think that marriage, which is a, is a concept, is created, is a, is a mental abstraction. You all think it's a finality. And you must be there, you must sit there, to see the day, you must be there till death do you part. Fuck that shit. How many people have died in abusive relationships? How many? You want to stay there and die. Eh, stay there and die now. Because you, you, are, you are listening to a vow thing that was constructed specifically to keep you imprisoned. If it's not working, leave. People go top, people go top. What will you, that will people, what will people say? Who gives a fuck? Really? Put up anyways. And if you're afraid of what people will say, then you don't know yourself. And therefore, you go repeat until you learn to understand that your happiness is numero uno. It's number one. And if you think I'm talking nonsense, let me direct you to the hypnotic program that you all believe in, in the Bible, which is a remote control, by the way. It says, love your neighbor as yourself. It didn't just say love your neighbor. It said love your neighbor as yourself. So what that means is be selfish. If you're not selfish, you're never going to know yourself. It is from the love you have for yourself that you can share with people. If you don't have love for yourself, you're going to share all that hatred, all that uh, bias, all those, all those low vibrational things within you. Yeah, that's what you're able to share with your partner. God help that one say, that one too, no guess sense. That relationship is going to be fucking toxic. And that too is part of the experience because when both of you have built up momentum and that thing hits a um, critical mass, it could explode or implode, whichever direction it is. So what I'm telling you here is we're in the paradigm of being yourself, knowing yourself, understanding yourself. If you don't do that, you're going to keep experiencing those things you refuse to resolve within yourself. Chaos is something a lot of people will run away from. I run towards it because when you understand that you are energy and there is nothing that is happening that is not you, then you will embrace everything that happens. Now, when you embrace everything that happens, where's the problem? I've always said that the main issue with humans is we were taught misunderstandings as understandings. And 
these misunderstandings we keep playing out as understandings. Therefore, there is chaos because there is no alignment. There is conflict. There is disorder. There is har disharmony. The only way to balance the imbalance is to embrace the imbalance. Chaos is chaos. When you know yourself, you create order out of chaos. We all need to learn the art of alchemy. And to put it simply, Alan Watts' um, backwards law makes it very, very simple. So I'm not going to create anything new, so I'll just revisit that. Simply put, I'm going to paraphrase it here. Seeking a positive experience becomes a negative experience. Acting a negative experience becomes a positive experience. When you understand this, you don't have any problems in this life. Experiences are ingredients with which the adept or the initiate uses to create that which needs to be experienced or understood. Many of you are afraid of your shadows and that's why you're not happy. People come around you, they shout, they do this, they do that, and then you react. I'm not saying it's wrong to react, but if you keep reacting all the time, are you really learning anything? I want to help all of you understand. It's not going to be free because what I'm sharing with you has come through sweat, blood, and tears. So many of you, I remember I, since 2017, I've been doing free. People call me sometimes in early in the morning, this, this, and I help them understand what it is they do not understand. I am not higher or lower than any one of you. I am just like you. The divine within me is the same divine within you. And I'm trying to help you spark that divine within you awake. There truly is no problem in this life. All there is are misunderstandings. And the misunderstandings are so great that is a thick fog of ignorance that has enveloped people's perception. And that's why people cannot see a lot of things as they truly are. They are obscured by their own ignorance. So if you truly want to know what's really going on, to thy own self, be true. 100% fast. This was a very great self-awareness. Sabi yourself. Kindly leave your comments down below about what you think about what my wonderful speaker sent in. And also, let's hear your feedbacks on what you think he should have done or things that you feel you agree with him on. Do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you've not already subscribed to our platform, Amina Jimo Show. At Amina Jimo Foundation. Thank you so much, Jazakallahu Kera for always coming here to watch us. Give us a thumbs up so that way we know that you do like what we are doing. Also follow us on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. All the links to our platform are on our YouTube. So do not forget to follow us on other platforms too. And feel free to share all our videos. And I would like to say a prayer. Bismillahillazi. La yaduru ma ismi. Shayu fil ardi wa la fi samai wa wa samiyu alim. Bismillahillazi. La yaduru ma ismi. Shayu fil ardi wa la fi samai wa wa samiyu alim. Bismillahillazi. La yaduru ma ismi. Shayu fil ardi wa la fi samai wa wa samiyu alim. Today is a wonderful day for me. Because today I am celebrating the twins in my family. E jire arai shok wimi lo jorogun. Moki yo, Mokita e Ken. Hmm? Alhaja, Nafisa, Ati Alhaja, Mui Bat, Moki, Olomba, Atuba Mo, Wapolui, Eshe, and you go and go at a lafia left in my bay, ni Igbesia ye, Laboro Lomba, go bon cutie banfe, no long and she free. I am greeting the twins in my family. They are my sisters. Today is their birthday. You all should help me celebrate them because they are very wonderful people and I do love them. Kimbabe jire o inu mi adun o eru ba mi o rara o rara o na 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 di be jire o e jire dara mole ponile molo 
Mole one, oh no, eh? Tae lo lu ijo lo, ijo, ejre ijo lo, ijo. All right, I don't really know the song very well, but I said what I could say. Love you so much. Have a good one and subscribe to our YouTube channel.